Today we're going to be looking at some of the nastiest bolters in existence, with a focused review of the Death Watch Primaris kill team. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about making the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So we looked at the regular Death Watch veterans last week, and now it's the turn for the Intercessors and their Primaris brothers. In this review we'll take a look at their datasheet, any obvious new buffs and synergies that they can get, and how I would use these guys on the table. I'm a really big fan of these mixed Primaris units, as I just find them a little bit more interesting than the all single purpose units that you usually get in Codex Space Marines. Having squads like this allows you a little bit of customization and flexibility, which I'm a big fan of. So let's see what they can do when we put them on the table. So these guys are known as Death Watch Intercessors in Codex Death Watch, and also more colloquially as either Primaris Kill Teams or Fortis Kill Teams as they were originally branded I believe. They are the other major troops choice for Codex Death Watch, and consist of a squad of mixed Primaris Space Marines. At base the squad includes one Intercessor Sergeant and four regular Intercessors, it can include up to five additional models in any combination of intercessors, hellblasters, interceptors, reavers, or aggressors. The Death Watch intercessors cost one point additional compared with their standard Space Marine cousins, clocking in at 18 points a model due to that incredibly powerful special issue ammunition. At base, each intercessor is armed with a bolt rifle and bolt pistol and frag and crack grenades, and they can trade out their bolt rifles for either auto bolt rifles or stalker bolt rifles. Now, the choice of bolt rifle is a particularly important one in the Death Watch as these are going to be the things that are kicking out the special issue ammunition. Unlike Codex Space Marines, the Death Watch have easy access to getting extra AP on their rifles, so I think that the Stalker Bolt Rifle is less good than it would otherwise be in other scenes. If you do need high AP, you can always switch to the Kraken and Vengeance rounds, and they cap at minus 2 and minus 3 respectively, so they wouldn't have any additional benefit on a Stalker Bolt Rifle. I think compared with standard intercessors, Death Watch far more want to use the Auto or the regular Bolt Rifle, as between special issue ammunition and combat doctrines, you make up the AP deficit. If I was running Stalkers, then it would mainly be for the Strastium, where you can snipe characters with those special issue ammunition rounds. The regular bolt rifles have additional AP, so are better against hard targets, particularly when using Hellfire shells. Plus, they also can double fire with rapid fire if you're taking a big squad of intercessors. But if you're not using the Strastium, then the auto bolt rifles are very solid and will have the better damage output on average if you're not using the stratagems. They all have their uses. In my opinion, I usually default to the auto bolt rifles, use the rapid fire bolt rifles in a big squad if I was planning to double fire them, and use stalkers if I solely want to get that stratagem off. Once you have your five intercessors and you've decided what to arm them with, then you can begin adding other models to the squad. Hellblasters don't gain you anything much besides the extra firepower that their plasma incinerators can bring. Unfortunately, they don't give you any extra special rules. The biggest advantage of Hellblasters in my mind is that they actually have a squad to hide in this time, rather than every time you lose a model, you lose an expensive plasma gun. So in a way, they're a little bit more viable here than standard Space Marines, but in a way they are competing against better bolters with special issue ammunition, and it makes it hard to justify their increased points cost over just more intercessors who already have excellent damage output. Next up we have the Inceptor, armed either with the Assault Bolters or the Plasma Exterminators. The Assault Bolters will cost you 45 points for a model, and the Plasma Exterminators 59 points. Including Inceptors gives you a bonus to the squad. Much like the Vanguard Veteran in standard kill teams, this guy can allow your squad to fall back and still shoot in the shooting phase as if they had fly. This one's a really handy special rule, seeing as the Death Watcher is quite so potent at range, and it means that they have that tactical flexibility, so it is worth including at least one Inceptor in the squad in a lot of circumstances. I find that their damage is a little bit mediocre, they're just not quite as strong as all of that special issue ammunition in my opinion, but it's not outright bad. They'll certainly chip in with some close range firepower, and the main thing is that you keep the rest of the squad shooting reliably. So if I was taking a big squad, I'd typically take one, but not usually more. Next up we have the Reavers who are 18 points. These guys are armed with a bolt carbine, heavy bolt pistol, frag grenades, crack grenades and shot grenades. Now the shot grenades are one of the most interesting things about the Reavers in which they can target infantry. It has a range of 6 inches and if you hit anything with it then it gets stunned for the next turn, meaning that it can't fire overwatch and subtracts 1 from its hit rolls in the following turn. If you manage to get this off on a reasonably decent infantry squad, then this could actually be really quite potent, particularly if your squad is thinking about charging in against a hard target with a lot of firepower. It does mean that you're potentially giving up a little bit of bolt fire for this, and it does make any bolt rifle stratagems you're planning to use a little bit less efficient. 
but giving up one special issue ammunition shot for the price of accessing this shot grenade isn't bad, and they also give you the terror troops rule, subtracting one from enemy leadership when your unit's within three inches of them. It's not much, but from time to time it might come in handy and cause an additional casualty from morale. I think the Reavers are pretty take or leave, their abilities are a little bit niche, but you're not really giving up all that much to include one in the unit. Finally we have the Aggressors, these ones cost the same as Codex Space Marines, either 35 points if you're using Flamestorm Gauntlets, or 37 points if you're using the Frag Storm and Auto Bolt Storm Gauntlets. I'm much more of a fan of the Bolt Storm ones, as they have pretty much similar damage output, and the Bolt Storms are longer range to boot. I find Aggressors a really interesting pick in the Primaris Kill Team, as it means that you can actually get them behind some tough intercessor bodies to tank wounds for them, and maybe give them a little bit more chance of doing their thing either in shooting or close combat. Their anti-infantry firepower is great, and their melee damage output against pretty much anything is pretty decent. Probably their biggest drawback is the fact that they're sort of competing with the actual intercessors in terms of their firepower, as special issue ammunition already chews very well through light infantry. They retain the standard being able to shoot twice if they're stationary, and they also give the squad relentless advance, which means that if the squad includes aggressors, then they can advance and fire assault weapons without suffering the penalty for moving and advancing before firing. This one can be handy for the vast majority of the kill team's weapons, everything can take an assault variant, which I think is most useful with the intercessors' auto bolt rifles. If you went pretty heavy on the intercessors, you could be moving and advancing each turn, going anywhere between 7 and 12 inches, and still laying down 27 special issue ammo shots, plus the aggressors shooting itself. In terms of upgrades, we've already talked through the vast majority of them. The Intercessor Sergeant, as per the new Psychic Awakening update, can take a Power Fist or a Thunder Hammer, which is pretty handy for boosting their melee potential if you're not going heavy on the aggressors. A Thunder Hammer really isn't a bad shout on a 3 attack model, and Deathwatch kill teams like to operate pretty close to the enemy, so if you're going for a pretty decent tricked out kill team, I strongly consider at least one of these on the Sergeant. Other than that, I think the only other upgrade that we didn't mention was the Reaver being able to replace their Bolt Carbine with a Combat Knife. Not worth it to give up the special issue ammo shots in my opinion, he can take a grapnel launcher, which for 2 points means that he ignores vertical distance moved. Not too bad, but only sort of useful seeing as the rest of his squad can't. And the intercessors can take auxiliary grenade launchers, which are pretty much useless seeing as special issue ammo is going to be better the vast majority of the time. In terms of special rules, again we've been through most of them. They have the standard Angels of Death now for their combat doctrines which stack with the special issue ammo, meaning that these guys really put out some fearsome shooting. If you have them teleport down in the tactical doctrine, then pretty much the entire squad can be having an additional AP-1. It's particularly solid on all of the AP-0 weapons, such as the Auto Bolt Rifles, the Reaver's Bolt Carbine, and the Aggressor's Auto Bolt Storm Gauntlets. It is pretty powerful that you can have AP-2 Hellfire Rounds coming out of Bolt Rifles, or AP-3 shots coming out of the Auto Bolt Rifles, courtesy of the Vengeance Rounds. They also get Bolter Discipline, if the standard Bolt Rifle variants choose to remain still and not fire any special issue ammunition that turn, sometimes that can be the best option. And Shock Assault will certainly help add to the boatload of attacks that Primaris Marines get, particularly for Aggressors and Thunderhammer Intercessor Sergeants. They can Combat Squad if desired, which can be interesting because it means that you could end up with some weird unit compositions if you wanted to split them up. If for whatever reason you wanted a bunch of Reavers tanking wounds for a Hellblaster or two, then you could. One of the unit's most useful rules is the Mixed Unit Special Rule, which allows the squad to essentially be the toughness of the majority of the models in the unit. If you did go heavy down the Gravis armor strategy, say get an Inceptor, 4 Aggressors and 5 Intercessors, then the entire unit will be Toughness 5. You can also tank those wounds on the Intercessors, so they're now even more tanky than they otherwise would have been. It can be a decent way of getting a little bit more durability out of an already reasonably durable unit. Overall, generally the Primaris kill team will be wanting to be fairly up close and personal with the enemy, laying down special issue ammo shots and making the most of the firepower from any Gravis armor variants around before getting stuck in in combat with their boatload of strength 4 attacks. So let's have a quick talk about other things that we can do with them on the table, and any way that we can buff them to make them a bit stronger. So we've already mentioned that this unit synergizes very well with combat doctrines, they also get their mission tactics of course, giving them just some extra flat damage increase against whichever target is most prevalent in the opponent's army. In terms of character buffs, they can benefit from all the same things that the standard kill team can, Watchmasters are excellent for getting extra accuracy on those shots as a watch captains, chaplains for plus one to hit and wound, and maybe even for extra movement on the charge if they're coming in out of deep strike, that's certainly something that the aggressors in the unit would thank you for. 
Apothecaries can also heal them and potentially restore units to the squad as well. And they can also profit from some of the relics and warlord traits. The Watch Eternal can make them very slightly harder to remove, giving them a 6 plus feel no pain type save when they each lose their last wound when they're near their warlord. And you could even combine this with the Dominus Aegis, the relic that gives them a 5 plus invul save, provided the warlord is next to them and they didn't move. We already know what 5 plus invul saves plus feel no pain type saves can do for intercessors, so it's interesting that the Death Watch can sort of deploy their own variant, though I admit it's a lot less flexible than the Iron Hands variant. As with a standard kill team, you can also use the Beacon Angelus to teleport them across the board by Captain Slingshotting them over turn 1, gain ignores cover from the Nowhere to Hide Warlord trait, and put them in the correct mission tactic that they'd like to be with by using the Tome of Ectoclades. In terms of transport options, they only have access to the Repulsor and Repulsor Executioner at the moment. I'm not honestly sold that these are a particularly great way to go unless you're including them in your army anyway because you want the firepower, and if so then it could be a reasonable battlefield bunker to keep them safe turn 1. It just grates a bit that for the points cost of the additional Repulsor you could have got an entire extra kill team and just had twice the durability of the models on the board in the first place. There's also some issue with transport capacity as well, including things like Gravis Armour taking up multiple transport slots, which is far from ideal. It's a real shame that they don't have access to the Impulsor as well, which would be a really nice include in a Death Watch army. Who knows, maybe in a future update. Next up we come to Stratagems, and with their Bolt Rifle Stratagems, the Primaris Kill Team has even better ones than the standard Death Watch Kill Team in my opinion. As always, all spec scan is great on high volume shooting infantry like these guys. Teleportarium can set them up in Deep Strike, which is a very common thing to do with the Death Watch and would be a reasonable move in most games. The various Doctrines can give them plus one to wound against a target, and that can be even better against vehicles with their bolt rifles and things that have a little bit of extra AP. Honor Your Brothers could allow them to fight again if they needed to, which could be good with a decent amount of aggressors and a thunder hammer in there. And Tempest Shells could allow them to stack a few mortal wounds on a random vehicle if you needed to finish one off. From their Psychic Awakening update, they also gained access to the various Bolt Rifle stratagems. The Stalker one can allow sniping, and if you're using a decent sized squad of Stalkers, you could make one character very dead indeed, though it costs a lot of command points. And the Auto Bolt Rifle one auto-hitting could be pretty reliable to get off out of Deep Strike, but it's not really significantly better than having a Watchmaster or Watch Captain nearby. My favourite of them is the Rapid Fire stratagem for the standard Bolt Rifle Intercessors, and I'd be most tempted to use this on a full squad of them when I had literally 10 intercessors all with bolt rifles. In normal circumstances, that would be 20 special issue ammo shots with an extra AP-1 or AP-2. With rapid fire, you're potentially getting 40 shots out of these guys, and if you get 40 hellfire shots out of them with AP-2, there's very, very little that's going to stand in their way. For example, if you have them next to a watchmaster and are in the appropriate mission doctrine and you get this little combo off, on average you will kill 23 tactical squad space marines with this volley. Any non-vehicle target is really going to feel the pain, and if instead you opted for vengeance rounds, and you also doubled down going on plus one to wound as well, you do on average 17 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. Sure that costs 4 command points and has some character support, but it's a way to just nuke a tank out of existence with your mere bolters. Other than that, Gene Wrought Might can get you some extra hits on 6s, and Transhuman Physiology is great on Primaris kill teams, as it blunts the impact of high strength multi damage weapons, which are the prime targets for killing them off. So, what are some reasonable builds for building your Primaris kill team in? I think there really are a few different ways you can go down with these guys, depending on exactly what you want them to achieve, which is nice as it allows you to be quite creative. You could go down the route of investing to make them toughness 5, get 5 intercessors with bolt rifles of some sort, maybe auto bolters, 4 aggressors for a whole ton of anti infantry and some combat muscle, and an interceptor to allow them to fall back and still shoot. That way, the entire squad is toughness 5 and just has a ridiculous amount of decent AP shooting. That setup would cost you 283 points, but it does get you a very tough kill team with 59 shots coming out of Deep Strike and a very fighty unit in all those power fists. You could certainly go the route of just taking all intercessors for a far more durable kill team and making the most of those special issue shots. Typically, I'd only go for the bolt rifles if I was planning to use the rapid fire strat, which is amazing. Otherwise, my first choice would be the auto bolt rifles, which I think have really come into their own now they'll be getting their extra AP in tactical doctrine. You could replace one of your 10 intercessors with either an aggressor or an interceptor or both, so they can advance and shoot and also drop back and shoot from combat. I really think that running multiple units of them could be very threatening though, particularly for units starting on the board. 
9 auto bolt rifle intercessors and 1 aggressor will cost you 199 points, spits out 27 special issue ammunition shots and also have a reasonable amount of close combat punch with all those strength 4 attacks and the aggressor's power fists not bad utility at all for how cheap it is. You don't even necessarily need to make them huge squads either. You could take smaller ones, maybe 5 intercessors and an aggressor, or 5 intercessors and a hellblaster if you fancied, and you could easily get more creative, adding in things like reavers instead of intercessors here and there, or even play around with combat squading them. I just love how flexible this kill team is. In terms of how I'd run them in-game, it really just depends on the exact setup that you're using for the team. The two main ways that you're going to be running them are either in deep strike or starting on the board. And you can certainly vary it up a bit depending on exactly what you're playing. Sometimes it might make sense to start the majority of the kill teams on the board if you're facing a slow moving horde and you can afford to just sit still and plug away with a few rounds of shooting at them as they get close. If you are deep striking them though, then you'll generally be wanting to come in turn 2 if possible to get your damage in as early as you can and you'll also be in tactical doctrine which is usually excellent for the squad's guns. I'd generally be looking to drop in near the enemy lines where they can absolutely obliterate a squad with their special issue ammunition and then hopefully also attempt to charge on another squad nearby, something that you don't care about killing quite as much. All the usual rules for deep striking units apply. If you can drop them in cover then do so. If you can get them to charge and wrap and trap a unit then again do so. They're also obsec as well, so it's not impossible that they might be able to chain out and reach other objectives. I'd try and push up with multiple threats at the same time on turn 2, so your opponent doesn't just have one isolated kill team to shoot at, and to spend one turn gunning it off the table in short order, so you only get one turn's use out of it. I'd push with multiple things at the same time, to better divide their target priorities, and give them problems. If on the other hand you're starting on the board, then I'd be more tempted to do this with slightly tougher kill teams with more intercessors in them, as the intercessors have the best resilience point for points. In general I'd try and start them in cover, or maybe even out of line of sight if it permits, and I'd also try and start them towards the enemy where possible, as even if you have aggressors to allow them to move, advance and shoot, they're still not the fastest units in the whole world, and will take a few turns to get to where they're going. If the enemy is coming towards you, then I'd let them and counter attack when they get there. If you're playing a gun line or a more mixed army, then it's probably better to move up towards the enemy, deal with any of their outlying infantry and put pressure on them to support your deep striking kill teams. It really wouldn't be hard to be starting 40 death watch intercessors on the board with special issue ammunition as I know that, that would be incredibly intimidating for a lot of armies to face. They're decently tough and they shred infantry like there's no tomorrow. So in general I feel like the Fortis kill team certainly has some really strong elements, particularly now that it's got access to those bolter stratagems, I think further driving us towards taking some more intercessor based squads. I honestly think that both this and the standard kill team are reasonably well balanced. They both have good damage output and are durable in their own different ways. The standard kill team due to having 3 plus inball saves and 2 plus terminator armor. And the primaris fought his kill team by just having a ton more wounds. I'm actually pretty happy to see that death watch have two decently functional troops choices now. And it's certainly been tempting me to try them out in a few games. So let me know your thoughts and opinions on the primaris kill team down in the comments below. It's always good to hear some people's kill team builds as they're so varied that you can come up with a lot of different decently creative things. I look forward to giving them a read. If you've enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, I'm sure we'll have some other Death Watch content coming out over the next week or so. Over the coming weeks I'm looking to take a look at the Corvus Blackstar, their HQ choices, relics and warlord traits, and perhaps look at an example Death Watch list or two. So if any of that sounds interesting feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you are enjoying the videos, then any support on Patreon will be greatly appreciated. They take quite a long time to make, and I do release multiple videos a day, so I have been investing a decent amount of time in the channel lately. If you've been enjoying regularly, then any support that you could spare would be absolutely greatly appreciated, as it's what keeps the channel going. I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my current Patreons for making this possible. In any case, a big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.